<laughs> you know what? I'm not even gonna rant, man. Um, that was that was a reality check. Um, that was a proper battering. Uh, that felt like we put, we were playing Bayern Munich at times. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Look, as I said, I'm not going to rant. This is not a time for ranting. Um, I, I think I think we need to we need to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves. I think we need to realize a few things. One. Uh, that particular match, first of all, congratulations, Brighton. You guys absolutely blitzed us. And it's not something that I'm actually surprised. As I said in my preview, as people that watch this channel on a regular basis, you would know I've been watching quite a bit of Brighton this season, and not just this season, even previous seasons under Graham Potter. Um, and I know how well Brighton play. They actually play some scintillating football. Uh, for the past three games, how Brighton have not picked up more points against Brentford should have picked up I don't know how Brentford won that, to be honest, 2-0. That's an absolute insult to Brighton. They were all over Devereux. Devereux kept them uh, in that particular match. Nottingham Forest, they should have won. Forest had nothing. Man City were in trouble in some parts of the game, especially most parts of the second half. And we got absolutely annihilated. We got totally destroyed. We got totally abused, um, <sighs> bullied. Their passing is so quick. Their movement is so quick. Their tactical awareness, the way they press, counter-press, they really hustled us. They roughed us up. It, you know, you know there, there are matches, ladies and gentlemen, where you, can, where you sit down and you go, do you know what? We weren't good enough. And, and you know, the, the opposition took advantage of key moments. This wasn't this case. Like, of course, we weren't good enough, but... The opposition were levels ahead, levels ahead. Do you know what I mean? Like, you want to be talking about this kind of stuff with teams like Man City, do you know what I mean? Or, or Liverpool of, of previous seasons. You don't want to be talking about a team that is so far ahead of you in terms of technicality, in terms of um, style of football, in the likes of Brighton. Like, Chelsea Football Club, and, and once again, no disrespect to Brighton, but the level is the other way around. Like, Brighton's level is high. There were times in that match I felt like, wow, Brighton probably would give Bayern Munich a very good go. Do you know what I mean? Like, Brighton are a solid team. Look at the way they, look at the way they attack, man. Quick one-touch pass... Each player does not, they don't take more than two touches. Control, pass, control, pass, control, pass. They don't dwindle on the ball, man. With us, there's a lot to learn, man. There's a lot to learn. We have to be patient. Some people in the live chat, in the watch along, were saying, Potter out, Potter out. You can't be Potter out. You can't. You can't, man. You, this Look, those days of sacking manager and bringing another one in and expecting success, those days are gone, man. Those were Roman era days earlier on. They, they haven't even been working in recent times. Now you can say, okay, we won the Champions League, this, that, the other. But, and it's a good, obviously, a, an ex exclusive title to win. But when was the last time we challenged for a Premier League title, man? It's been a long time. That kind of tactics of changing and chopping manager ain't going to work. You've got to be patient, man. You, as much as we hate to say the process word, you know, part of the process, believe the process, trust the process, it's true. It's true, man. Have a look at teams like Arsenal. Do you know what I mean? Like how many times Mikel Arteta probably should have been sacked? Maybe at least six, seven, eight, nine, ten times in, in the last three years. But they've stuck on, and now they're seeing the fruits of it. You know, if you want to win now, you need a manager like like Antonio Conte. Spurs were two 0 down against Bournemouth, and Conte managed to get Spurs back to three um, two. That's what you're going to get with Antonio Conte. Antonio Conte is all about now. You bring in someone like Graham Potter, it's not about now. It's about the future. 
that Brighton team that we saw today, that's not Roberto De Zerbi's Brighton, man. Like, Roberto De Zerbi literally just took over. And De Zerbi said when he took over that I've not had to do much with this team because Graham Potter has left it in a brilliant place. But that Brighton, it took Graham Potter three seasons to get to that level. Now, you'd expect with Chelsea having better players, we can get to that level quicker. But it's here as well. What, how is it possible, ladies and gentlemen, with the level of players, and once again, I repeat, no disrespect to Brighton, but the level of players that they have, look at on paper, the names we have and the names they have. Dunk, Webster, Estupian, Lalana, McAllister, Saicedo, the Japanese striker up front, um, Trossard, Gross, Solimash. And look at our names, do you know what I mean? Sterling, Havertz, Generational, as some of you guys will say. Mount, Gallagher, Pulisic, and the list goes on. How, why is the level between these two teams so huge? On paper, it looks like, well, that looks like a superstar team. Chelsea's team looks like a superstar team. How are they getting bullied and battered by Brighton in that manner? Absolutely abused. Absolutely abused. The way they started the match, oh my God, in such electric manner. I have to say, Thiago Silva was rattled in the beginning stages. It was his mistake, and then obviously he cleaned it up. But it was his mistake again that... Considered that goal first up. Leandro Trossard. Trossard steps up, wants to impress Chelsea Football Club, doesn't he? Um, we should definitely look into Leandro Trossard. Um, then there were 2 0 up in no time. Um, own goal from, from Ruben Loftus cheek, but once again, a very attacking sort of movement off the back of a corner. Um, and then right before halftime, there were 3 0. You know, when we were looking to score, they went in and scored the third one. And once again, they manufactured that own goal. I know it was an own goal for Ochalaba, but they manufactured that. None of this stuff, except for maybe Ruben Loftus cheek, none of them was lucky. They really manufactured even the own goal, especially the one for Chalaba. And then obviously they go on in the second half and get that, get that fourth goal as well. Um, and they probably deserve to get five or six, to be honest. Us, on the other hand, I have to say maybe Grand Potter needs to take some blame in this game. I mean, you know Kai Havertz never plays well with, with him being the striker, and he played a very good game against Salzburg just behind the striker. Why not have Aubameyang and Kai Havertz just behind, or Broha and Kai Havertz just behind? Um... If you wanted to fit Mount, okay, then then play him instead of Gallagher. And I know Gallagher, for me, in this match, was the standout Chelsea player. But if you want to fit all these players, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. Do you know what I mean? Like, for me, that particular situation was wrong. But the one really sticking situation for Chelsea in this match was how open our midfield was. We got totally annihilated in midfield. It was so open. And today, who are we going to blame? Jorginho? He didn't even start. He didn't even feature. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, as much as we've been praising him for the past few games, today, Ruben Loftus-Cheek in that midfield, especially in the first half, because obviously in the second half, he became a right wing back, right back. Ruben Loftus-Cheek was rattled. He didn't know what day it was. The ball was zipping around, moving around so quickly, he had no idea. Kovacic was decent, but was also, you know, overwhelmed by the situation, I think. Conor Gallagher, as I said, was our standout player. Even though Kai Havertz gets the, gets the header, Kai did nothing besides that header. He was back to his old ways again, you know, dispossessed pressed, physically out-muscled, Sterling, another stinker, stinkers after stinkers after stinkers after stinkers. It's concerning now with Sterling. 
That's the kind of match I need Sterling to come back to form. He's dribbling into defenders. His passing is off. He's not shooting. He's not confident. Mason Mount, uh, once again, another disappearing job, another invisible job. Yeah, bits and pieces here was good. But that form that he had, today he went back to the way he was before the form. And it's just been some poor performance. Even Chalaba was not that good. There were times where they went in behind Chalaba. Look, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, for me, it's a reality check. Newcastle won, Newcastle ahead of us. Spurs are ahead of us. Man United just a point behind us. Potentially will go in front of us. And Brighton are only three points behind us. They're, they're in seventh. De Zerbi gets his first victory. Did it have to be against us? <sighs> Did it have to be against us? But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm just surprised at the scoreline, but I'm not surprised at how well they played because I know. Do the players not know this? Do the players not know how good Brighton is? As I said, I think we have to reassess our expectation. I don't know where the top four... Today gave me a good realization that top four is going to be tough, man. I don't know whether we're going to make it. We have to be patient with Graham Potter. It's going to take a bit of time. He needs his players. January is important. We need to get a backup for Reese James because right now, Ruben lost the chic wing back, right back. You know, it all creates a domino effect. And you midfield is out of whack up front. Like Ruben Loft, Reece James is, is not just a defensive monster, but a creative outlet, scores goals, assists as well. And I'm not saying it's all down to, you know, us missing Reese James, but it's a factor. In January, we need to address these things. And we need to give Grand Potter his players. And we just need to be trusting the process, ladies and gentlemen. Trust the process.